and hello again from Portugal, central Portugal. We're currently in a nice little village in Serra de Estrela, uh, which is north of Castelo Branco. And we stayed the night in a lovely stone cottage. And I really love <laughs> all the little old stone buildings. And it just has such a nice feel to it that the place got the atmosphere really nice extremely quiet uh, yeah it's just perfect we're currently heading we noticed in the morning because we arrived in pitch black um, that there's a little castle towards the top of the hill so that's where we're heading now Tell you what, I do like their attitude to health and safety. Um, they do have railings on some of the walls, um, but on the whole, it's a bit like, well, keep your eyes open. If you fall, it's your fault. <laughs> oh, beautiful views, especially with, the, with it being so clear today. You can see way into the distance. We can also see is obviously over the last few years, they've had pretty horrific forest fires. And um, the hills here are just scarred. You, c you can see just hectares of woodland just b burned down to matchsticks, essentially. Um, yeah, not great. We tried to um, find some food. Um, there's a restaurant at the top by the castle, but they don't serve, they don't serve food until 12 o'clock, and it's uh, just past 11 now. We don't really want to be sticking around, so we're gonna hit the road and try to find some breakfast. Let's go. Right, I wasn't going to record um here we've literally just stopped at aldi Lidl. i always get the two confused uh just because we needed to get some water and obviously when you drive along it's quite easy to see one of those and pull in and get the water you need uh whereas in the smaller town even in porto it was a bit of a task to, to find somewhere just a regular shop where you can buy some water i think it, in the end we ended up buying some uh in a restaurant really um now the reason why I'm recording this is because when we went in, obviously we had a look at um, veg, fruit, and we bought a few things. We got our water, but they have a fresh orange juice squeezer in the juicing machine. That is brilliant. And now, obviously we've got juice places in, in the UK, um, so fresh orange juice isn't really anything, you know, out there, but with this being made from fresh oranges as opposed to ones that were sort of taken off the tree green and then shipped across the world. This is just amazing. So yeah, I don't know whether this is the same for all the Lidl shops here in Portugal, but it's absolutely amazing. Oh, and the car park's got these brolly things in a car park so that your car doesn't get too toasty whilst you're doing your, sh your shopping. 
Right, off to try to find some breakfast now. Okay, so not much luck with the uh, with the breakfast idea because the place we were hoping to eat at, which is over here, um, is shut. <laughs> so uh, yeah, no food there. We did get some fruit and some snacks from Lidl when we were there, apart from the amazing orange juice. Um, so that'll have to do for now until we get to the next place. Um, yeah, we're not doing too well with, with food and <laughs> stuff. It's just... When you're in an amazing place, like this, I don't know, we just tend to prioritise sightseeing and going to see the place rather than food. <laughs> but, at least, trip wasn't wasted because, I don't know how much you can see on this clip, but I'll show you a different one. There's like a little field of crocuses, which I've never seen before, they, they literally just about poke out of the ground. But yeah, like a little pink carpet. Pretty cool. Now, this is lazy sightseeing at its finest, but um, it's drizzling a little bit. I don't know if it'll show on the window, but yeah, it's drizzling a little bit. Um, there's, there are, I drove past a few houses. They don't really look like there's anybody living in them. Um, but there's what looks like just over there, that looks like the most stone-based cottage I've ever seen. It's, uh, it looks like it's basically been carved into a massive boulder and somebody just created a stone wall in front of it, stuck a door on it and, and a window. That's pretty cool. Right, I'm actually, I'm going to go out and have a look at it. <laughs> pretty cool. Now, Serra de Estrella mountains are pretty awesome. Beautiful sights. The road's amazing. If you have a nice car and you like, like driving holidays, yeah, definitely come and have a look. If you are just renting, then rent something nice at the airport and take it around the roads here. You can have a lot of fun. Uh, we're in a crossover, so not so much, but just driving quite slow anyway, just looking at all the sights. It's absolutely beautiful. And since we're out of the car already anyway, we might as well go and have a look over there. <laughs> Some views. Now, because the mountains are relatively bare, at least in this area, uh, you can see quite in quite well into the distance. It does look like it might be raining at some point though, which for these guys over here is quite good because they've had a lot of drought, heat waves, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but to be honest, that seems like quite a distance away, so. We're not particularly concerned. Let's get back to the car and see what else we come across.
I'll be honest, we haven't. Re we didn't really last long in the car. We literally drove for five minutes, and we're like, "Ooh, let's stop over there." Uh, and then we came across. Well, just behind this boulder, actually, there's another house that was carved into a massive boulder. This one over here. Again, it's got like a stone built wall at the front, but it's quite a lot of it's like in the rock. And then you've got this essentially derelict house because it's it's all falling apart to bits other than the stonework. Obviously the stonework's as good as new almost. Uh, but yeah, this will have been somebody's courtyard or a driveway at some point. Which is a shame that it's no longer that because I mean the views over there from that house. I'll spin you around. You tell me what you think of the views. Drop us a comment or something. Because, right, you've got that house there. You've got your front door there. And then this is your view. Obviously this is, this is how you drive up to the house. This is where you would park your car. Not that it's for sale, I don't know. We just wandered down the path and saw it. Uh, but this is the road that would take you to the house through like a little forest. Amazing. Love it. Okay, we have now come off the road uh, and we actually got to our destination where we're going to be staying for the next few days. Uh, we are closer to Castelo Branco, we've come down from the mountains uh, and we're sort of between Funjao and Castelo Branco. Now, we could have stayed in a hotel, we could have stayed in a hostel, we could have stayed in well, all sorts of different places. Which is one of the reasons why we chose to stay in a yurt. <laughs> Never stayed in a yurt before. Um, it is completely off-grid. There's no electricity connection. There's a solar panel, uh, which is, I imagine, connected to a power bank, some batteries. Uh, so we do have ways of charging our phones and, and things. But, uh, yeah, basically, not connected to sewage or anything like that so as I was saying solar panel there and that's the entrance let's have a look inside the yurt Okay, so you saw the yurt, 
so let's move on to the bathroom slash kitchen over here so on this side we have the kitchen where well you have a sink um, access to water and you can do your washing up as Joe's doing now not too complicated no dishwasher a washing machine okay like I said off-grid now on this side however there's a little path that takes you to the other side of the building and that is where your shower and the other business is located okay so the setup is nothing fancy as you can tell what basically you've got is a composting glue as you come in now if you're not familiar with a composting glue it's basically think of a hamster uh, you have a bucket uh, inside the bucket you have some sawdust once you've done your business you cover your business with some more sawdust and then rinse and repeat essentially uh, when I say rinse and repeat I mean you don't rinse the bucket out every time just leave it there until your bucket's sufficiently full to the point where you want to empty it which I think it, it's a bit of time uh, and then for the shower you have a fairly regular gas shower uh, connected to a solar hookup so that's where the electricity for it comes from but yeah looks pretty cool uh, it's not gonna be to everybody's taste uh, but we we wanted to try it <laughs> see what it's like it's a bit like glamping I suppose winds picking up that storm that I showed you earlier in the video whilst we were in the mountains is well and truly above us now i don't know if it's going to show but can you see the dark clouds yeah they're they're above us now uh, we we're going to drop our bags off and then off to try some well try to find some food which we haven't done really well with that so far so hopefully we'll have better luck this time